Hi and welcome to Reiki 3, the third degree. Now, to arrive here, you've already spent a great deal of time going through both Reiki Level 1 and Reiki Level 2. And for that, you are to be congratulated. Well done. And in this third video, we're now going to focus our attention on Reiki 3. And this is an important level as you move towards Reiki Mastery. So in this, the third of three videos in the series, you will be introduced to the tools and the techniques used to teach and pass on attunements. This information will be presented in an easy to follow format and in a way that is simple and practical. Now as is the case with most things in life, there are always new things to learn with Reiki. In fact, your learning curve will continue as you move further down the path towards total Reiki mastery. And this is just the start of a new page of your life, and it represents the start of an incredible personal journey. And the great part is that you get to decide where it goes. Now, in this final video, you'll be introduced to each of the master symbols and how they are applied for spiritual and cosmic connection. And at this level, you will find that your final initiation further increases your capacity to channel the universal energy, above and beyond what you can achieve at level 2. And as a level 3 student, you're also going to be given what is called the Usui Master Symbol, and this symbolizes your mastery, and it also allows you to work on a spiritual level. And this is where you get to contact your own inner truth. And this level is called Inner Master because it involves acknowledging that you are the master of your own destiny. You are responsible for your own life and everything that happens in it. And this profound and powerful knowledge will often help you to find your true path in life. And with this newfound knowledge, you may in fact find that you need to make changes in your life to align with your life's true purpose and meaning, which is an incredibly valuable gift of knowledge. Okay, so you have finally arrived at Reiki Level 3, and for your reward, you will gain access, through a final attunement, to the Asui Tibetan Master Level, where yet another central energy channel will be opened up for you. And it is at this stage that you will be given four additional Tibetan Master Symbols. And it is here that you learn the techniques that enable you to perform Reiki initiations yourself. Now at this level, which is the Mastery Level, you will recognize that you have the responsibility of teaching Reiki to others. And it will be your right to initiate others so they too can gain access to all of the benefits of Reiki. And it goes without saying, given your experience so far, that as a Reiki master, you are no better, wiser or enlightened than the next person. But what it does mean, however, is that unlike others, you are now able to pass on this wonderful gift to others who seek it. It is my sincerest hope that your journey towards mastery is for the greatest good, and that you seek it to enhance your own life and the life of those around you. Early on in Reiki history, there was a point in time where Reiki was threatened with dying out due to an impending war, and thankfully this did not eventuate as there were dedicated individuals like Dr. Usui, Dr. Hayashi and Madame Takata that dedicated their lives to Reiki and in doing so, it continues to thrive and changes the lives of countless individuals. So with that in mind, as a Reiki master, it is your responsibility to make sure that what you learn during your lifetime is distilled and passed down through to the next generation to make sure Reiki lives on in all of us. The more people who know of and channel this wonderful Reiki energy, the universal life energy, the more we come to realize that we are all the same and we are one. And when we realize this, we become connected and then we can live in peace and in harmony with each other. Now, we know from Dr. Usui's experiences that Reiki was not valued by those who did not exchange anything for its healing power. And thus, 
many people receiving this gift fell back into old ways. They neglected their health in every aspect. So with that knowledge, you should not give it away, nor should you make it unaffordable for people to access. This is an equal value exchange. Reiki is omnipresent and it is powerful. It is within each of us. It is in every breath we take and it lives within each and every cell within us. And by using what you know as a Reiki master, you can enhance and proliferate this natural healing power and make it part of your everyday life. See, the most important prerequisite to becoming an Asui Reiki master and teacher is to have the desire and the best of intention to help others. It is thus my greatest pleasure, it is my honour, and I am extremely proud of what you are achieving through your mastery. Now, we have already experienced a number of important symbols used in Reiki. And from here, we're going to be introducing three additional symbol types that have their own unique set of coinciding beliefs. So the first group of symbols are referred to as Tatwas, and this is a Sanskrit word meaning thatness, principle, reality, or truth. And these tatwas have the power or ability to create effect inherent in the form of a symbol. So there are five tatwa symbols. There's the yellow square that represents Prithvi, which is earth. Then there's the blue circle that represents Vayu, which is air. And then we have the silver crescent that represents Apas, which is water. From there, we have the red triangle, which represents Tejas, which is fire. And finally, we have the indigo ovoid, which represents Akasha, which is spirit. Now, tatwas are visual tools that serve as centering devices, and they are said to directly stimulate the subconsciousness energy patterns in the brain and energy body, as well as the physical and non-physical reality. Okay. The second group encapsulates the belief that certain objects and symbols, like prayer beads, can be charged or empowered through intention or ritual process, and even their proximity to a holy location and the people they contact to create an effect. And the third group of symbols are tools that act as triggers which enable you to connect with and harness the energy a spiritual function or information that exists separate from the symbol itself. In this case, the symbol actually is more like a switch, like we talked about earlier, to turn power on or off as needed. And the actual symbol does not possess any power on its own. So with that in mind, Reiki symbols are part of this third group. They are the tools, the keys, that open or shut turn on or turn off switches to enable connection with the various elements of the universal energy used for healing. Each Reiki symbol represents something unique, a specific set of energy properties and functions used in the healing process and for spiritual growth. So when someone attuned to Reiki visualizes these symbols, draws them or intones their name, it helps them to connect themselves with the necessary Reiki energy and activates the specific function and purpose that particular symbol represents. Now it is important that you don't only use direct intention when activating your symbols. Instead, practice and use what you experience in their use to assimilate their information into your being. Now, it's not necessary for you to understand their meanings entirely or to even consciously use them to access the benefits. They are a tool to help remind us and to help us guide and focus us as we channel Reiki energy. There are other systems including Seikim and Karuna that use their own set of symbols to focus on other aspects of the universal energy. However, you can use Reiki for these same functions without needing further attunements and with or without the use of additional symbols. Over the years, the Reiki attunement process has evolved. It has developed from weekly lessons in the Reiki Ryo technique 
where you would meet to practice and to receive healing treatments. It used to be that the Master would give you Reiju, which empowers and deepens your connection with Reiki. And this would take some time, upwards of two years before you would be invited to learn Reiki too. Now in the Hayashi Takata lineage, called Usui Shiki Ryoho, these symbols are of great importance. This system was designed to teach Reiki faster, with more emphasis on the use of symbols and the hands. It's interesting that when Madame Takata taught her students these symbols and of their importance, that each student was sworn to secrecy not to share these symbols and other practices she taught them. Okay, here is the Reiki master symbol, Daiko Myo. This is by far the most powerful symbol of all Reiki symbols, and it can only be used by Reiki masters. This is the symbol that as a master, you will use to heal the soul. And with practice, this particular symbol can bring about profound changes in one's life. The Daikomyo symbol is complex, and it's a composition of three kanjis, and the kanjis create the mantra Daikomyo which simply translated means great bright light or great shining light. And like Ho Shazen Shonen, you can look at each kanji's meaning separately. Now the first kanji, Dai, is an adjective meaning big, large or great or grand and its adverb means greatly. Now the second kanji, Ko, is a noun meaning light and its adjective meaning is smooth or glossy. And it's also an adverb meaning merely, purely, or completely. And the last of the kanji, myo, is an adjective meaning bright light, or clear, or evident. And it's also a verb meaning understand and know. Now, there are two versions of the pseudo-Tibetan master symbol, dumo, aka the Tibetan daiko myo, and there are also two versions of the non-traditional daiko myo. So the Daiko Myo symbol represents empowerment, intuition, creativity and spiritual connection. And it enables recognition and clarity regarding your true path in life. And the Daiko Myo master symbol is used for activating the initiation and attunement of others to Reiki. The Daiko Myo symbol activates an incredibly powerful energy for self-empowerment and is used for opening spiritual connection, intuition and healing at both a cellular and genetic level. And many people who experience level 3 attunement report an increase in their intuitive and psychic ability. Daiko Myo is referred to as the vocational or life purpose function as it often initiates dramatic changes in career and lifestyle choices. Now, the Daiko Myo can also be used to help manifest your goals, your dreams and desires into being. And as is the case with most Reiki symbols, to activate Daiko Myo for manifestation, you draw or project or intone the symbol and then clearly visualize exactly what it is you intend to manifest into being. Now, the spiritual body affects the physical body and healing at the master level is thought to directly affect the higher spiritual body template which can lead to incredible transformation and healing on all levels, often likened to miracles. So let's take some time to draw Daiko Myo. First, draw the Daiko Myo with your palm. Then draw it with your finger. And from there, visualize it. Project the Daiko Myo using your third eye chakra and intone the symbol's name three times. From there, draw or project the symbol onto your hands or palms, and then draw or project the symbol onto your client's crown chakra, the area to be treated, and your client's hands or palms. And this incredibly powerful process was born way back when Dr. Usui had what is known as a Satori, which means a moment of oneness or in other words, an awakening to his true nature. And in that moment, he created Reiki. 
And as a point of reference, we know that Reiki refers directly to the universal life force. However, the kanji can also be interpreted to mean the universal life energy, or the spirit coming together with us. And in this, we are oneness with all. Now during Reiki 3, you learn the Daikomyo symbol, you become the one with the great shining light. And the universal life force is merged with that of your clients. And this profound experience does not come about through a simple tick box or piece of paper certificate, but through a deep realization of the truth. You realize that you seek nothing. You do not look to attain anything. You have no goal to reach. And you realize there is just oneness. Daikomyo represents love, light and harmony, and the three together create the ultimate source in the same way the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost do. The Daikomyo is the great shining light and is from the same source, and once you know and apply the Daikomyo, you can use it for any form of Reiki healing, even in place of all other symbols. Remember, it is the master symbol. Alright, let's move now into the non-traditional Reiki Master Symbols that you can choose to use, or for that matter, completely ignore. And in choosing, the advice is that if you feel drawn to a particular symbol, trust your intuition. There's a reason for your feelings, so let them guide your choices. Now, this next symbol, Dumo, represents the swirling, fiery heat of the Kundalini which in other words is the rising energy and consciousness coiled at the base of your spine since your birth. And it is the life force that we are aware of. Now, Dumo is thought to be the igniters of the sacred flame or Kundalini fire. And it is said that Dumo unifies the mind and body and works with the fire in the base chakra. And those who use the Dumo claim that it pulls negative energy and disease from the body, from the room, or out of the situation and releases it. And those who use crystals as part of their practice report that it can be used effectively for self-clearance. The Dumo is used in the attunement process with the violet breath, and it is visualized in gold coloring. Now, there are Reiki branches that use the Tibetan fire serpent before performing an attunement or healing session. And the snake-like coils that you can see here represent the Kundalini energy, which represents coiled or stored energy at the base of the spine that surges upwards through the body as the coil unwinds. And this surging energy of the fire serpent symbol cleanses and joins the chakras and brings them back into equilibrium which allows Reiki healing energy to flow freely. And there are other Reiki branches that use the Tibetan symbol Raku to close the connection between teacher and student following the completion of an attunement or healing treatment. And this symbol is similar to a lightning bolt in appearance, and its purpose is to ground Reiki energy. And the Raku symbol can also be used to help remove negatively charged karma and bring the student to a heightened state of consciousness during an attunement. Some practitioners and masters use it to draw energy from the universe into their body and the body of their recipient. Now the modern Daikomyo, as used in the Kurama temple, represents Sonten. Now Sonten is the living supreme soul of the universe. And at this higher level, one realizes that as a wave is water, and as water manifests as a wave, that in this knowledge that they are Reiki, and they are the great shining light and always were and always have been. This next symbol is white light and pure life force, and the vibration of this symbol is called the primary energy of life directly from the Creator. Okay, let's talk about Reiki 3 attunement. As is the case at each level, Attunement is used to open up energy channels into the body, and after the attunement is complete, this channel stays open and the student is able to channel Reiki energy permanently. 
Now the attunement process doesn't turn you into a healer. As the student, you merely become the vessel through which Reiki flows through. Again, it is Reiki that does the healing. So the actual attunement process may vary from master to master, as can the symbols they use during the attunement process. And this, like most elements of Reiki, will not affect the success of your attunement in any way. So your key to experiencing a successful Reiki attunement is to relax, be open to suggestion, and have the right intention to become attuned to Reiki. Likewise, the key for others that you attune is for you as master to be relaxed, open, and have the positive intention to attune others to Reiki. It is very straightforward, and at Reiki level 3, it takes mere minutes to perform successfully. As is the case at all level attunements, make sure that you or your student takes off their jewellery as you don't want any energy interference. And once that is done, as a student, sit on a chair with your feet flat on the floor and with your hands in the prayer position. Now when performing the attunement, the Hui Yin, Violet Breath, is not considered traditional Reiki technique, and you can pass through attunement either using them or not. However, some people report that their attunement feels more powerful when using these techniques. And again, if you feel this is right for you, then use it. Now the Hui Yin point is located between the anus and the genitals. And when using the Hui Yin, it is contracted and the tongue is placed against the soft palate behind the upper teeth. So if you are going to use the Hui Yin technique, which coincidentally Dr. Usui did not, then you must make sure to practice and develop the muscular control that is required to hold the point for lengthy periods of time. And if you do practice this technique, go easy. You don't want to overdo it and injure yourself. Now from here, visualize a white mist surrounding you, and then contract the Hui Yin point and place your tongue behind your upper front teeth. Breathe in and imagine that white light coming down through the crown chakra, through the tongue, down the front of your body, through the Hui Yin point and up the spine, and from there to the center of the head. Now imagine this white mist filling the head, and now visualize the white mist turning blue, then indigo blue, and begins rotating clockwise. As the mist rotates, see it turning violet in color. Now inside this violet light or mist, then visualize the Dumo symbol in gold coloring as you can see here. Importantly, if you do decide to use the Hui Yin technique, then during the attunement process, make sure to blow the Dumo symbol and violet breath into the student's chakras, including their crown chakra, where you will visualize the symbol moving into the base of the brain as you silently intone the name of the symbol. Now let's move on to crown to crown attunements, which are the easiest way to attune another person. And it can be as simple as activating all of the Reiki symbols above your student's head and intending to attune the student to a specific level of Reiki. And from there, it's simply a matter of allowing the power of Reiki to take over. And once you have activated the energy and the attunement is complete, the energies will begin to flow into your crown chakra and through your body, and at the same time, it will cascade over your student's aura. And the crown to crown attunement will run until it has cleared any blocks it encounters, and from there, permanently connecting the student to Reiki and enabling them to access it. And an important point to go back over is to make sure that you always intend for the attunement to be in harmony with the highest good of the recipient, and use your intuition to guide you on how long the attunement should last. And to enhance the experience of attunement, use silent intonements, that the student chakra be connected with you to receive the ability to use and share Reiki, removing any blocks or impediments and add that you intend their connection to Reiki to be permanent, uplifting and inspiring, bringing new hope, energy, information and healing abilities to their future Reiki practices. And when you near the end of the attunement, 
you will notice that it will taper off to a complete stop. Again, use your intuition. You will know when the time is. At this point, intend thanks and appreciation of all participants and return to grounded awareness and a mental ending of the attunement process with something like, this attunement is now complete. And practice washing your hands to cleanse away any energy that may have become trapped and to sever any remaining aura contact. Now, we're preparing to begin the attunement ceremony. And this is where there are so many ways of performing the attunement. And again, as is necessary in attunement, the most important part of all of this is your intention. If that is right, and your intention is for the best good of your student, then the attunement will be a success. Now, as was previously discussed in an earlier video, there are a few things you need to do to prepare. See, as you will be in close proximity to your student, it's important that you are clean and that you smell nice. And another important part of this preparation includes setting up an appropriate environment. It's critically important to create the right settings whenever performing an attunement. And if you cannot provide such an environment at home, then you might look at other options, which could include hiring a consultation room in a dedicated healing center. So here are some of the things to consider when setting up your healing environment. You should make sure that the area that you're using is clean and tidy. It should be well lit and there should be a feeling of well-being and safety. Another important element required to deliver effective healing is to make sure that you will not be interrupted during the session by internal or external distractions. So before commencing, make sure to take a look around have a listen to your general environment and identify anything that would affect your session. And if there is, either remove it or plan another time or place to deliver healing. And if you are healing from home, inside your own dedicated space, if you have family around, just let them know that you're about to have a session with a client and ask them to be quiet or maybe go somewhere during the session. Now, step two is about setting the scene. And this is where you will set up a straight back chair. And if you are attuning more than one student at a time, then positioning the chairs in a circle. And another important part of making your clients feel comfortable is to make sure your environment is temperature controlled. You don't want to be too cold or too hot. Now as to the exact temperature, this will be up to you to decide and it might be an option for you to ask your students what temperature suits them before you start. As you want to offer an amazing experience, consider the colors that you use and look to add some plants to your room. Another thing to add are crystals under your treatment table that help create the right energy. Now, some people love to add some ambient sounds as well, where other people prefer to work in absolute silence Again, involve your client by asking them whether or not they would enjoy some relaxing background sounds. And another thing to consider adding is aroma to your healing environment. Things like incense and oils can be very pleasing to the senses. But with this, be careful as some people may have sensitivities to these things. So again, it's important to ask before you start your healing session. And one important part of preparing is to make sure you know whether your client has a pacemaker. And if they do, you are not to proceed with the session as the energy channeled may interfere with the device. And beyond that, never give a Reiki attunement to anyone who suffers from diabetes and are taking insulin injections. So what information should you share with those who are about to have an attunement? Well, the best course of action is to explain in detail the entire process from beginning to end. This includes cleansing away any negative energy through to the types of emotions and reactions they may experience. And during this explanatory period, make sure that you explain that the reactions they have are normal and expected, as this will help calm their nerves as they go into the session. Now, when you are sharing the types of reactions they can experience, you might want to provide a pre-printed list of known reactions that they can have. Things like heightened awareness, heat, cold, 
colours, memory recall, involuntary movements, falling asleep, itchiness, emotional responses of various types, stomach upset, pins and needles, and feeling like your hands are moving. And when the session concludes, it is recommended that you have a discussion about their experiences, to share learnings and to give insights into technique. Given the information we've just shared, it will be assumed that you have done the necessary preparation before commencing the attunement for your Reiki 1 student. This includes setting up your environment and taking care of your personal hygiene. So now you have your student sitting in a chair with their eyes closed and their hands in the prayer position. Now follow these steps. Step 1. Stand in front of your student approximately 2 to 3 feet away. Ask your student to raise their hands in the prayer position in front of their heart chakra. Get them to take a deep breath as they perform a silent invocation that opens themselves up to receiving the Reiki attunement. Give them a few minutes to complete this step. Now ask your student to become relaxed and ask that they follow your every instruction and importantly, to enjoy the experience. Begin the attunement ceremony by drawing a large choku ray symbol over their heart chakra while silently intoning the words choku ray three times to activate the Reiki energy in and around their aura. Now with your hands cupped in front of your body, beam Reiki energy into their heart chakra to open them up to receiving the Reiki attunement. Hold this position for around 10 to 15 seconds or until you feel it is time to continue. Now for step two, stand in front of your student at about two to three feet away from them. With your eyes closed, raise your hands into the prayer position in front of your heart chakra and silently intone a short prayer. And when you feel ready and you can sense the presence of Reiki energy, you can then open your eyes, move nearer to your student and place your non-dominant hand on their shoulder. Now raise your dominant hand in line with your own third eye chakra and directly above your student's crown chakra. Now place your tongue behind the roof of your top of your mouth behind your front teeth and contract Huyin to boost the flow of Reiki in and around your body. From there, draw the Daikomyo symbol the Honshei Zen Shonen symbol and the Choku Rei symbol in the air above your student's head to activate these symbols and also so you can call on them during the attunement ceremony. Remember to silently intone each symbol three times. Now for step three, draw a small Choku Rei symbol above the student's crown chakra to open their crown center. Now place your cupped hands over their crown chakra and channel each of the three symbols just mentioned into your student's crown chakra, filling it with Reiki energy. And from there, move your hands onto their shoulders and channel the three symbols just mentioned, down from their shoulders into their arms, chest, core, thighs, legs and feet. See Reiki energy going into every muscle organ, tissue and cell throughout their entire body. And in step 4, while standing at the right side of your student, draw a choku ray symbol over your student's throat chakra to open their throat center. Now with your right hand a few inches away from the front of their throat chakra and your left hand a few inches away from the back of their neck, Channel the three previously mentioned symbols into their throat chakra, filling it with Reiki energy. Now on to step five. While standing at the right side of your student, once again, draw the Choku Rei symbol over your student's third eye chakra to open their third eye center. Now with your right hand a few inches away from the front of their third eye chakra and your left hand a few inches away from the back of their head, channel the three previously mentioned symbols into their third eye chakra, filling it with Reiki energy. Okay, in step six, move around your student so now you are standing in front of them. 
draw a small Joku Ray symbol once again over their heart chakra to open their heart center. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together, facing towards your student's heart chakra, now channel the three previously mentioned symbols into your student's heart center with wonderful Reiki energy. And in step seven, stand in front of your student and draw the Choku Ray symbol over their hands to open up their hand chakra. Then place your non-dominant hand around the back of their hands so it is cupped around their thumbs. Now using your non-dominant hand, move their hands nearer to you so they are now in a position that will be easier for you to work with. Now while you are clasping their hands, bend over to be at eye level with their hands and place the fingertips of your dominant hand on your student's fingertips. Now maintain this position while channeling the previously mentioned symbols into their hands. And on to step eight, where you stand in front of your student and whilst leaving their hands in the prayer position, you step back slightly and draw the Choku Ray symbol over their solar plexus, sacral and root chakras to open the remaining three energy centers. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together facing towards your student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakra, channel the three previously mentioned symbols into their solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, filling them once again with warm Reiki energy. And for step nine, while standing in front of your student, place your hands around their hands and move them so that their fingertips are in line with their heart chakra. Then blow the violet breath into the heart chakra. From there, move their hands so that their fingertips are in line with their third eye chakra. Again, blow the violet breath into their third eye chakra. And finally, Move their hands so that their fingertips are in line with the top of their head and blow the violet breath into their crown chakra. And in step 10, stand in front of your student and take their hands and move them down so that they are resting on their lap. Again, draw the Choku Ray symbol over the front of their body to ground their energy. Now place your hands a few inches above their crown chakra within their aura field. From there, starting from the crown chakra, run your hands down both sides of their aura field until you reach their feet. Then touch the floor with both hands to complete the grounding and break the connection between you and your student. And finally, the last step is to silently intone a small thank you prayer to Reiki. At this point, permit as much time as needed, then ask your student to come back to full awareness in their own time, or say something like, this now concludes your first degree attunement. Now at this point, you might ask your student about their experience. How do they feel? What visions did they have? And so on. And this helps your student to process what has just happened and it acts as final completion of the attunement process. In this next section, we're going to go through the steps to attune your own student to Reiki Level 2. Again, we will assume that you have prepared the environment and that your student is already sitting in the chair waiting commencement of the process, with their eyes closed and their hands in the prayer position. For Step 1, stand in front of your student. You should be about two or three feet away. Then ask them to raise their hands in the prayer position up in front of their heart chakra. Then ask them to take a deep breath as they perform a silent invocation to open themselves up to receiving their attunement. At this point, give them a few minutes to complete their intonement. And when you sense that they are ready, then continue. Now ask your student to relax and follow your instructions and most importantly, to enjoy the experience. Next, begin the ceremony by drawing the Choku Ray symbol over their heart chakra while silently intoning the words Choku Ray three times to activate the Reiki energy in and around their aura. And from there, with your cupped hands in front of your body, 
channel Reiki energy into their heart chakra to open them up to receiving their attunement. Hold this position for around 10 to 15 seconds or until you feel it is time to move on. From here, walk around them counterclockwise to the back of your student. And for step two, stand two to three feet away from your student. Raise your hands into the prayer position in front of your heart chakra and silently intone a short prayer. And when you sense Reiki energy is present and it is flowing, then open your eyes and move closer to your student and then place your non-dominant hand on their shoulder. Now raise your dominant hand in line with your own third eye chakra and directly above their crown chakra. Now place your tongue behind your top front teeth at the roof of your mouth and contract Hui in to boost the flow of Reiki in and around your body. And then draw the Daikomyo symbol, the Honshaze Shonen symbol and the Choku Rei symbol in the air above your student's head to activate the symbols remembering to intone the names of each symbol silently three times. Now for step three, stand behind your student. Draw a Shoku Rei symbol above their crown chakra to open their crown center. Now place your cupped hands over their crown chakra and channel the three previously mentioned symbols in their crown chakra, filling their whole head with beautiful Reiki energy. And from there, Move your hands onto their shoulders and channel the three previously mentioned symbols down from their shoulders into their arms, chest, core, thigh, legs and feet. And imagine Reiki energy entering every muscle, tissue, organ and cell of their body from the top of their shoulders down to their feet and up to the top of their head. And in step four, while standing at the right side of your student, draw a small Chokure symbol over their throat chakra to open their throat center. Now with your right hand a few inches away from their throat chakra and your left hand a few inches from the back of their neck, channel the three previously mentioned symbols into their throat chakra, filling their throat center with Reiki. Now in step five, while standing at the right side of your student, draw a small Choku Rei symbol over their third eye chakra. Now with your right hand a few inches from their third eye chakra and your left hand a few inches from the back of their neck, channel the three previously mentioned symbols into their third eye chakra, filling it with wonderfully warm Reiki. Now moving on to step six, now move around so you are standing in front of your student and draw a Shoku Rei symbol over their heart chakra. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together facing towards your student's heart chakra, channel the three previously mentioned symbols into their heart chakra, filling it with loving warm Reiki energy. With step number seven, while standing in front of your student, Draw a Shoku Rei to open their hand chakra. From there, place your hands onto the back of their hands and gently hold and open them up and move them down towards their lap so their palms are facing upwards towards you. And from there, draw the Shoku Rei symbol, the Honshe Zei Shonen symbol and the Seihai Ki into the palms of their right hand and then tap the symbols into their right hand and silently intone that the symbols will remain with the student for life. Now repeat the exact same action on their left hand. And once the symbols have been embedded into both palms, holding the back of their hands again, guide their hands back into the prayer position and move their hands up in line with their heart chakra. Moving on to step eight. Whilst you are standing in front of your student, leave your student's hands in the prayer position. Take a small step backwards and then draw the Choku Rei symbol over their solar plexus, sacral and root chakras to open their remaining three energy centers. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together facing towards their solar plexus, sacral and root chakra, 
begin to channel the three previously drawn symbols into their solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, once again filling them with wonderful warm Reiki energy. With step 9, stand in front of your student and place your hands around their hands and move them up so that their fingertips are in line with their heart chakra. Then blow the violet breath into their heart chakra. From there, move their hands so now their fingertips are in line with their third eye chakra. Then again blow the violet breath into their third eye chakra. Next, move their hands so that their fingertips are in line with the top of their head. And now blow the violet breath into their crown chakra. Now with step 10, again standing in front of your student, take their hand and move them down so that they are resting on their lap. Now draw the Chokure symbol over the front of their body to ground their energy. Now place your hands a few inches above their crown chakra within their aura field. And then starting from their crown chakra, run your hands down both sides of their aura field until your hands reach their feet. Then touch the floor with both hands to complete the grounding and to break the connection with your student. And finally, silently intone a thank you prayer to Reiki. At this time, allow your student as much time as they need or until you intuitively feel that the time is right, then say to your student, you can now come back to full awareness in your own time and whenever you are ready. Or something like, this concludes the level 2 attunement. Now in this lesson, we're going to look at how to attune your own student to Reiki level 3. And at this advanced stage, we'll assume that you have taken the necessary steps to prepare for the attunement and that your student is sitting in a chair with their eyes closed and their hands in the prayer position. So to perform the Reiki level 3 attunement, for step 1, stand in front of your student making sure that you are around 2 to 3 feet away from them. From there, raise their hands into the prayer position up in front of their heart chakra. Then ask your student to take a breath as they perform a silent invocation. And when you sense they are ready, then you can continue. Now ask your student to become aware of their environment, to relax and importantly, to enjoy the attunement experience. Now start the ceremony by drawing a large chokure symbol over their heart chakra while silently intoning the words chokure three times to activate the Reiki energy in and around their aura. Now with your cupped hands in front of your body, channel Reiki energy into their heart chakra to open them up to receive their attunement. And hold this position for around 10 to 15 seconds or until you feel intuitively that it's time to move on. Now walk around counterclockwise to the back of your student. And for step two, stand in front of your student about two to three feet away from them. Raise your hands into the prayer position in front of your heart chakra and silently intone a short prayer. And when you feel ready and you sense Reiki energy is flowing, then open your eyes and move nearer to your student and then place your non-dominant hand on their shoulder. Now raise your dominant hand in line with your own third eye chakra and directly above your student's crown chakra. Now place your tongue behind your top front teeth and contract the huiyin to boost the flow of Reiki in and around your body. Remembering that intention is the key here. Now draw the previously mentioned Daiko Myo symbol, the Hon Sha Shonen symbol and the Choku Rei symbol in the air above your student's head to activate the symbols and allow you to call on them during the ceremony, remembering to silently intone each symbol three times. For step three, stand behind your student and draw a small Choku Rei symbol on their crown chakra to open their crown center. Now place your cupped hands over their crown chakra 
and channel the three previously mentioned symbols into the crown chakra with pure Reiki energy. From there, move your hands onto your student's shoulder and channel the three previously mentioned symbols down from their shoulder into their arms, their chest, core, thighs, legs and feet. Now visualize Reiki energy filling every muscle, organ, tissue and cell of their body from the top of their shoulders down to the tips of their toes and back up to the top of their head. And in step 4, while standing at the right side of your student, draw a Chokurei symbol over their throat chakra to open up their throat center. Now with your right hand a few inches away from the front of their throat chakra and your left hand a few inches from the back of their neck, channel the three previously mentioned symbols into their throat chakra, filling their throat center with loving warm Reiki energy. Now with step 5, again standing at the right side of your student, draw a small Shokurei symbol over their third eye chakra to open up their third eye center. Now with your right hand a few inches from the front of their third eye chakra and your left hand a few inches from the back of their head, channel the three previously mentioned symbols into their third eye chakra, filling it with Reiki energy. Now in step 6, move around so you are standing in front of your student. Then draw a small Shokurei symbol over their heart chakra to open up their heart center. From there, with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together, facing towards your student's heart chakra, channel the three previously drawn symbols into their heart chakra, filling them with beautiful Reiki energy. In step 7, while standing in front of your student, once again draw a small Chokurei symbol over their hands to open up their hand chakras. From there, place your hands onto the back of their hands and gently hold and open them up and move them down towards their lap so their palms are facing upwards towards you. Then draw the Daikomyo symbol into their palm of their right hand. Tap the symbols into your student's right hand and silently intone that the symbols will remain with them for life. Now repeat the exact same process on their left hand. Once the symbols have been embedded into both palms, holding the back of their hands, again guide their hands back into the prayer position and move their hands up in line with their heart chakra. Now in step 8, Stand in front of your student and leaving their hands in the prayer position, step back slightly and draw a small Shokurei over their solar plexus, sacral and root chakra to open up their remaining three energy centers. Now with your cupped hands side by side, thumbs together facing towards your student's solar plexus, sacral and root chakras, Channel the three previously drawn symbols into their solar plexus, sacral and root chakra, filling them with amazing Reiki energy. And in step 9, once again stand in front of your student and place your hands around their hands and move them so that their fingertips are in line with their heart chakra. And blow the violet breath into the heart chakra. Now move your student's hands so that their fingertips are in line with their third eye chakra and blow the violet breath into the third eye chakra. And from there, move their hands so that their fingertips are in line with the top of their head. Again, blow the violet breath into the crown chakra. And in step 10, stand in front of your student, take their hands and move them down so that they are resting on their lap. Draw a large Chokurei symbol over their body to ground their energy. And from here, place your hands a few inches above their crown chakra within their aura field. And then starting from the crown chakra, run your hands down both sides of their aura field until you reach their feet. Be sure to touch the floor with both hands to complete the grounding and to break the connection with your student. And finally, silently intone a thank you prayer to Reiki. 
and at this point in time, allow as much time that is needed, then say to your student, you can come back to full awareness in your own time, or this concludes the third degree attunement. Now, at this time, you might choose to discuss the experience with your student, asking them to share what they felt during the attunement process. This is a valuable part of the process as it allows your student to verbalize their experience and it can help if they need further information to confirm that their attunement was a success. Although with Reiki there's always something new to learn, as you have seen, many of the steps are the same or similar and their use is both simple and in a format that over time can be recalled from memory. At this stage, let's recap your journey during this particular video. You've been introduced to the Reiki Master Symbol. You have been shown, step by step, the process that is used to receive an attunement and have learned how to attune others at Reiki Level 3. This is an amazing journey that you have embarked on and your journey into Reiki Mastery is really only the beginning of your personal and spiritual path. There is so much more that awaits you as you practice and refine your techniques. Now again, as a Reiki master, it is important to always remember that you are no wiser, better or more enlightened than another. You are merely a channel through which this amazing energy called Reiki is channeled through. The difference is that now, after your personal investment into learning these techniques, you are now able to pass on this wonderful gift to others to enhance their lives as well as your own. It's vitally important that we continue sharing this wonderful gift. We need to share it as we go about our daily lives. And by doing so, we move step by step towards the realization that we are all connected and that we can live in peace and in harmony. And in doing so, the world we live in becomes a better place. Now, if you recall in an earlier section, we talked about the balance between sending and receiving Reiki. So if you are practicing Reiki, be sure to position your services as a Reiki master such that this balance is maintained by making your services affordable and thus available to all who seek to harness this wonderful healing energy. You have demonstrated desire, positive intent, and you are truly at one with everything. And it is you who can help proliferate this natural healing method as an everyday part of life. Thank you for coming on this journey with us. It is our privilege, our honor, and we are humbled that you chose us. And one thing before we go, as was mentioned in a previous video, it is well known that distant healing can be just as effective as in-person healing sessions. Now, this form of healing is ideal for those who are physically unable to attend, for whatever reason. And with that in mind, it is our mission to help as many people as we can to benefit from this wonderful healing energy. And as such, we have made distant healing a core part of our service because we know just how important this is to you, your family, and your friends and colleagues. And to enable us to facilitate your introduction to this incredible healing power, we have made available for you a website that you can access to book your attunement. Alternatively, you will find other methods of contacting us on this page. And if you're wondering, we attune students to their desired level, one, two, or three. And we can do this individually, or we can combine all three at once using distant attunement. Now, some caveats to distant healing. As a student, following your distant attunement, you must self-heal, practice on others who seek your help, and you must live with positive intention, and you must make the commitment to study Reiki thoroughly and ensure that you, as a practitioner, work in accordance with the guidelines that have been provided to you throughout this video series. And where you decide that you want to offer distant attunements, make sure that you and your student are well prepared beforehand, and have agreed on a date and a time for the attunement. Encourage your student to prepare by having a comfortable environment for the ceremony. 
make sure that they have enough time available and that they prepare by making sure that they are relaxed and that their mind is open to receiving an attunement. You may wish to suggest that they turn on some soothing background music, add incense and have a comfortable chair to receive their attunement. And importantly, ask that they remove distractions like mobile phones, televisions and any other devices like washing machines that may interrupt their experience. And leading up to their attunement, ask your student to avoid junk foods, alcohol and drugs for at least 24 to 48 hours beforehand. And here's an amazing way to use technology to deliver a distant attunement. First of all, find out the address of your student who is about to receive the attunement. Then search Google Maps and actually take a look at where they will be during the session. This is an incredibly effective way of visualising and connecting with your student. You can really feel your presence in their location during this ceremony. There is no right way or wrong way here. The important part is positive intention. OK, when beginning the distant attunement, have your students sit in their chair with their hands facing down and resting on their lap. Then silently intone a short prayer. From there, visualise being connected across time and space as if you were in the same room as your student. And from there, go through the entire attunement process in your mind. Or by using the surrogate method discussed earlier. And at the end of the ceremony, ask the power of Reiki to sever the connection between you and your student and ask Reiki to return you to your current location. And then conclude the session with a short thank you prayer. Then finally, ground yourself and completely break connection between you and your student. Okay, I want to explore the topic of psychic surgery. Now, this is a far more advanced Reiki technique that enables us to take charge of our inner power and use it to heal. See, we all have dormant abilities inside ourselves that are waiting to be used, and the ability to heal ourselves is one of those abilities. And the best part is that it's simply a matter of claiming this power and developing the skills to use it. If we look at why people are not in optimum condition, we find that it is because they attract or create blockages to the flow of life force energy within themselves. And these blocks usually manifest in a particular shape and lodge themselves in or around the organs of the body or in the chakras or aura. And these negative energies can cause health issues as well as other difficulties in life. Now, once they are removed, the free flow of life force energy is restored and the affected person becomes healthy again. Thus, psychic surgery can be used to release these blockages and can improve the person on an emotional, physical and spiritual level. And it can also help improve relationships and combat addictions. And this surgery is performed as part of your Reiki session on others. And you can also apply it to yourself. OK, so here's how to do it. In part one, first give the cause of the problem an identity. Name it. This enables you to focus directly on the cause and release it. This also involves finding the location of the block and deciding what it looks like. And to do this, ask your client to think about the issue they have and want to have healed. Note that it is unnecessary for them to tell you what the issue is. They just need to think about it themselves. And as they think about it, ask them to have their eyes closed. Ask them to think about where the cause of their issue is within their body. And if they find this difficult to do, then have them choose a location and reassure them that there is no wrong answer. Ask them if the issue had a shape, what shape would it be? If this issue had a colour, then what colour would it be? And once you have this feedback, both you and your client have something to focus on during the healing session. It is now that you ask for your client to willingly let go of the problem as you are sending it to a higher power and ask them to focus all of their thought to the shape and the colour that they previously described. And in this process, your client can be sitting or laying on a comfortable table or bed. 
Now move behind them and draw the power symbol on the palms of both your hands and activate it by saying its name three times. Draw a large power symbol down the front of their body and activate the symbol by intoning the name of the symbol three times. Now draw a power symbol on each of your client's chakras to empower them, activating each of them by once again intoning the name of the symbol three times. Now extend your Reiki fingers. And this is done by grabbing hold of the thumb and fingers on your dominant hand with your other hand and imagining they are stretchable like soft toffee. Now stretch them to about 12 to 18 inches or so, breathing in as you do this several times. Now move your hands around, imagining you can feel these extended fingers and the increased power they contain. Now psychic surgery is done with your full focus and intention. It is done with the presence of your entire being, your physical, emotional, mental and spiritual self. And it is done with complete confidence in your abilities, knowing that Reiki is all powerful. Now say a prayer to yourself and ask that healing take place within divine love and wisdom so that the highest good is created for all concerned. At this time, ask your client to focus on the location of their blockage and ask them to be willing to let go of it. Then draw a power symbol over the area where the block is located. Now use your strength to imagine reaching inside the body and grabbing the negative energy with your extended fingers, pulling it out and releasing it to the ground to dissipate and disappear into the earth for good. Breathing in as you pull this negative energy out and breathe out as you release it. Repeat this as many times as you intuitively feel necessary. From here, heal the area with Reiki energy. Then step back and make a movement similar to a karate chop to sever the connection between you and your client. And if you find that there is resistance and the shape has not changed, then it may be that the blockage has a lesson connected to it and that you must inform your client that this is the case. From there, draw the mental and emotional symbol over the affected area and treat it with Reiki. This is an amazing technique that works. All of our problems are within our ability to solve, and it is important to realize that there is always a higher purpose for everything we experience in our lives. Remember, Reiki energy goes where it is needed the most for the greatest good. Not only is it easy to learn, it will transform your life, it will improve the lives of those you love, and it will help you live a full, happy and vibrant life, full of love and light. And in bidding you farewell, Namaste.